Welcome to Vacation Station, hosted by Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazines.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Vacation Station travel show with Nancy and Lisa. So you know that every was it every fourth Tuesday it always just comes around so fast we get excited about this we get to chat with travel writer Debbie Stone who we call fire monkey because you know she got that name when she was in Bhutan she's traveled the world she's you know crossed this country America quite a bit during COVID time I think she's done almost every state and she's done what all seven continents and today she's joining us to talk about her walking adventures at Hadrian's Wall it's a it's a path, a walking path on Hadrian's Wall. Well, not on the wall, but this is a very historic, ancient wall from the Roman times. And um, she went back on this walking adventure. It's like, a, you know, a, a walking vacation with Celtic trails. And uh, she was on the show a few years ago talking about her time with them when she did Wales Coastal Path. But this time she says, I'm doing Hadrian's Wall. So welcome back to the show. Fire Monkey, how are you? I'm doing well. And you ladies, yeah. good? We're yeah. doing good. I almost called you FM because you know, all our emails are <laughs> FM. And then half of my files of Debbie is FM, Debbie, Debbie FM. I mean, like, I can't find things sometimes. I'm like, what? Look up Fire Monkey FM, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. <laughs> I know it is. But, you know, the monkey went on the wall. That's it. No. But this That's is, you, know, you think about like these walls, these historic walls, and you went and actually got out there again. And uh, everyone, the article's up on nationalparktraveling.com, and you can see the Wales article there too. Um, Hadrian's Wall Path, what drew you to this particular trail? Because the wall isn't really there that much. Well, there's a part of it, right? Yes, there is a part of it that's still remaining. Um, I think it was... You know, I had had such a wonderful experience with Celtic trails uh, in Wales, and um, I had heard about Hadrian's Wall from other uh, some people who who do these kinds of walks, and I thought, it, you know, the scenery sounded like it would be really quite spectacular up way up north. It's up in the Northumberland National Park area, up toward the border of England and Scotland. And that area is just so picturesque, the times that I've been in England and Scotland. And so we thought we would do a portion of it like we did with the the Wales uh, uh, coastal path and to get a flavor of it, to also see the history. Uh, because it's not only the wall, uh, it's um, the sites that they have there, the the World Heritage sites, the uh, museums, the uh, places where they've done excavations, uh, what they've found and discovered. And so, uh, you know, and as you walk, you know, you're you're walking in these, these uh, you know, these hills and these vales and these, you know, and, and you're mm. also walking where there's tons of sheep <laughs> and <laughs> more sheep than people. And you're really out there and it's just, um, it's really a spectacular experience to be up there. And then with Celtic trails, you know, you just use a day pack because they transfer your luggage from India in so you just have to See, walk this is the magic next place and so to me that's like the best of the best you don't have to worry about anything they just take care of it they're very very dependable and very responsible and then you get to the next inn which is usually a a, a quaint uh, place you know in a, in a village somewhere and uh, then you go have cool. dinner at some pub and you know the other yeah. experience is, is wonderful yeah it's 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 great so we were drawn to doing something again similar to what we'd done with the Wales coastal path but you know, different scenery and a different, whole different theme in terms of this historic Roman wall. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, really. Though, I know we should be playing <laughs> sheep on the show right now, you know, but this, but this is, I think it's so magical because, you know, I, you know, we've talked about like, you've done parts of the Appalachian trail. And of course we've all done parts of the Pacific crest trail and, you know, well, not all of us, but you know, there's these, these major treks that we have in this country. And then people are either, you know, through hikers or the day trippers right but no right. matter what you wonder like don't put so much in your backpack because it right. sucks like carrying right. all of that and if you're camping and all of that you're you're just so careful about every you know every piece of candy has weight you know right so it's right. um <laughs> when you're doing this this is kind of the cool thing where you get to take a leisurely stroll and then go to a pub at the end of the day and like to me this right. is the ultimate of magic 
but it seems like this kind of got you a little bit more than the Wales Coast Path on regards to strength, like because this was more hilly. Isn't this a little bit more like you're going up and down and sometimes yeah, walking on the it, road? It, it's different. Yeah, in places, I mean, you know, the Wales Coastal Path also had, you know, certain areas, but this, you know, definitely had, you know, you had some, uh, you know, big, big hills that you had to go up and down and through farmer's fields and, you know, all that kind of stuff, and sometimes on the road, and, Fun. you know, you follow the, the same symbol that was uh, with the Wales Coastal Path, uh, which mm-hmm. all these these, high, these long walks have, but it's this white acorn that's on a post, and, you know, you follow that, uh, you've got maps that give you all sorts of things that you, you know, hopefully will not be able to lose your way. I mean, most of it is, I would say, you know, 90-some percent of it is pretty well marked. You know, occasionally, you know, you'll be looking for the white acorn, and it'll be kind of maybe hidden by a tree or something like that. But for the mm. most part, it's it's pretty it's pretty easy to follow uh, this particular path. And, uh, you know, it's a, the whole thing of it is about 84 miles. We you wow. know, probably did about half of that. But, you know, you have to think about that the wall that is there, that is remaining, Remaining, is a second century wall. Mm. Uh, I mean, mm-hmm. fortification, you know, back in AD 122 by the emperor Hadrian, Hadrian, who wanted to kind of separate the southern part of the island from the north. The north was very lawless at the time, so it kind of marked that limit for his empire, which was a huge. Uh, you know, stronghold that spanned about 3,000 miles across Europe and the Mediterranean. So, you know, it was, he was, I mean, Rome, you know, you know, Rome, I mean, mm. you know, it was, it was, it was big and they, they had a lot of it and territory was important to them, you know, and so this was kind of the extent of their part of their empire. Um, so he wanted that wall built and it was amazing that, you know, that they, they, they it took them about six years, the army to build that wall. And it took wow. actually 10 years, 10 years to create the wall path. Uh, national trail so it's kind of an interesting you, you see how much what could be done in six years by these roman soldiers you know it was just remarkable remarkable wow it it is when you really think about it like do you, how much money it would cost today for us to do something like that oh mm. definitely and you know the materials yeah. and you know everything that is just it's it's crazy, you know, and you're, you're there mm. and when you see it, you're just like, I can't believe how old this is. And then parts of it, you know, parts of it are in, you know, you know, you, you really see that there is a wall. Parts of it are, you know, crumbled and, and part of it is, of course, uh, most of it is not as tall as it was, you know, it's mm. fallen down or it's eroded or whatever. And in some places, you know, when the Romans left the the residents, the farmers, they took some of the, the materials mm-hmm. from that wall to use for their own, uh, you know, uh, residences and, and, and farms and things. So, you know, in, in some places there is no wall, you know, and others are very <coughs> small. And then in other places you can see, you know, this is where maybe a turret was or where, you know, and they show you these plaques and these signs. So when you're looking at it, you see, the, well, this is what it really looked like, you know, and this is what it, it looks like now, of course, you know, because it fell into disrepair, you know. Wow. Yeah, uh, over time, but I, you know, I could see way back then, like that looks like something I could use for a fireplace. <laughs> yeah. just haul off yeah, a few or, stones. I mean, it, but it kind of reminds me of when we were back east in, um, well, we're still back east, uh, but yeah. we were in, um, we were up in Baltic, Connecticut, and Hmm. the wall like we were in this farming area and it was like being in England in some ways and then Mm -hmm. on on this farm that we were staying at the walls were all these old rock walls that Mm -hmm. the the farmers put together I mean this we I think right probably talked to you while we were there it was that that uh house from Ben Benjamin Franklin's niece built this farmhouse oh yeah 1700s it was the 1700s and so, I mean, that that's pretty cool. old for America. You know what I mean? Like to be, yeah. you know, other than our yeah. cliff dwellings and our mm-hmm. ruins from our indigenous peoples, you know, here. And right. um, those rock walls, though, were like, wow, these guys you mm-hmm. really knew how to build a wall. They didn't even yeah. use like cement or anything. I mean, and they're still yeah. standing. And, yeah. you know, we'd watch deer run over them. The dogs mm-hmm. would hang out on them. Snakes like them. Um, 
but <laughs> I, I don't think you did so many snakes up in the North Count country. No, no, we saw no snakes, just sheep and cows. <laughs> Isn't that the yeah. difference about, See? okay, so all you have to do is not stand in the, the paddies, the, you know what I mean? The, yeah, the cow pies and the sheep droppings and, you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you get you get used to them, but, you know, you're in the land of the Moors, you know, and the, yeah. this, this, yeah. this pastoral cool. undulating, you know, if you're thinking of Jane Eyre and you're thinking of Withering Heights, well, that's exactly what you're, what, you know, mm-hmm. where you oh, are. Wow. You know, it's just windswept and it's just, I, you know, it's really, there's a magnificent, magnificent quality uh, to it that, uh, you know, that's what people, and also it's, you know, you're out there and it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty remote, remote. You know, we came across uh, hikers, of course, uh, in both directions, going from one end to the other, and some were doing the complete thing, some were doing parts of it, you know, and it's always mm-hmm. nice when you run across people, everyone's pretty friendly out there, you know, you, you're out there and there isn't much else out there, and you're not really, uh, in some places, you're, you know, pretty remote from civilization, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, so it's always nice to see a friendly face come about, you know, and you stop and chat a little bit and, and then move on, but uh, yeah. what's nice about yeah. this is, you know, you have a, a set amount of miles to walk say it's 10 miles or whatever 11 miles or whatever it is from end to end and you have basically all day you know to get to where you're supposed to get to so you know it's not a race you know some people do it for the you know they want to see how fast they can do 84 miles and in terms of the the whole thing other people i think more or less more people like us we're doing it for this this leisurely experience and to really you know, yeah, take and, it all in. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, you want to take it all in, Heather. You know, and I mean, it was mm-hmm. just yeah, take it all in and not. Uh, you know, I'm not a fast hiker, and I personally like to just kind of take my time, take pictures. You know, really yeah. appreciate my landscape instead of worrying about the the clock all the time. You know, but it seems like you go to places too. I mean, to me, it's like if a little town came up, I'm going in for a beer, like Absolutely. or a cider. Like I'm Absolutely. I'm doing a detour. Like you know, if there's a museum yep. or you know yes. what I mean? And it seems like that's what you got to do is, and there are like historic sites dedicated to Hadrian's wall as you go. Yes. Yeah. There's, there's the, they're called English heritage sites and they're all along the route. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's like Corbridge Roman town and there's, you know, uh, the, the, um, Housestead's Roman fort and Chester's Roman fort. And, uh, you know, you go to these places and you see the remains and where they've excavated. And then they have like usually museums that show the objects that they have found, you know, and some Mm -hmm. of them are just remarkable seeing what, what was, you know, what, what was found there that it was still in, you know, fairly amazing shape for how many years it's, you know, like over 2000 years old kind of thing. And, uh, you know, then there's also some film footage you can see and, but a lot of artifacts and, uh, uh, and with wonderful views also of of the uh, the remains and the the forts and you can wander around the barracks blocks where they were where was the hospital where was the you can even see the ancient toilets you know and it's it's uh, it's 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 really amazing you know uh, one of the best ones I think is is the Vindolanda which is probably the largest mm. uh, excavation and it is truly. The museum is truly one of the, the probably the better museums I've seen in the world. It was so wow. dedicated to this collection of artifacts. It's so comprehensive. It's just crazy. And they have the the writing tablets, the Vindolanda writing tablets, which are the at the time were the oldest surviving documents that were handwritten in in Britain. And they're all cool. crazy of wood. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. And then a, a collection of Roman that's like finding the Rosetta shoes, Stone. You know? you know what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. The Rosetta Stone. Right. Yeah. This is and so they, cool. You know, they, and they were written in Latin, you know, and mm-hmm. so, you know, they, they, they figured out what they said. And so they give you the translations, you know, and it's, it, to me, it's just fascinating that they were able to find these things and that they were in enough condition that they were able to piece together and, and see what it is that these people were writing back then. You know, but that's like going into Southwest and you're in Santa Fe and, you know, like going to Bandelier and places like right. you know, Cliff Dwellings in Silver City, you know, all the yep. cliff dwellings and, and all this rock art and pictographs yep. and yep. petroglyphs, right? When you go yep. there, you know, like the indigenous people sat and they were communicating something. And sometimes I say like they just really wanted to draw, you know, right. I mean, right. you know, so they have this, but. And, you know, when you find these pieces of pottery or arrowheads and, and all of this, it's really exciting to to yes. witness. And that's ancient, ancient. But in England, too, I mean, 
Huh. This is the same kind of, it's like rock art. It's like petroglyphs, you know, getting to see that. You know, and, and it, it's awesome that that things are being saved and were saved because a lot of times people just destroy whatever, they don't care. You know, we've right. been in places where the artifacts are, are being attempted to be protected and saved, but there is always right. vandals and people who just don't get it. Right, right. You know, Absol it, which absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and so I always look at when when something is saved, especially the older it is. I think it it's a it's, sometimes I think it's so a lovely. miracle. You know, it's that a, it, actually, to me, it's amazing that they preserve yeah. that they you know were able to excavate and find this and then preserve it and make it yeah. available for for the public to be able to you know see this this amazing history that happened in this particular part of the world. You know, so yeah. to me, you know, not only am I walking in as I say the, the That's sandal it. Yeah. steps of of these Romans, but I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm really you know I'm in the same landscape. I'm seeing what they saw in terms of the landscape, and then I get to see you know what. You know, what did they use to write with? What did they use, you know, for clothes? What did they, how mm -hmm. was their jewel? You know, all that kind of stuff. What did they eat? You know, how did they survive? Mm -hmm. And how did they create this, this huge exactly. empire yeah. in this area? You know, so, yeah, to me, it's, it's once again, you know, you're making history come alive. It's, it's a wonderful way. Mm -hmm. But you mm -hmm. saw their shoes and recipes. And this I is know, not, you I saw know. the leather shoes, yes. the Roman leather shoes. But yes. so here's, and you even saw the pens. You know, the, yeah. that they wrote these, yeah. these you know, pieces with. But the recipes, so were the recipes part of those tablets? Yes, yes, they were oh, on the... Oh, my gosh. Yeah, supposedly they were on those tablets. And so they sometimes they would exchange, you know, with recipes with people's, you know, whether it's family or friends or whatever, you know, the correspondence wow. that happened, you know. It's just, it, to me, it's remarkable when you think about how old something is and you know, that you're able to see, yeah, these, these were people doing what we do, you know, writing to each other, you know, or whatever, you know, and, wow. you know, or whether it was, a, you know, in the, in the wow. army, expense, expense reports or, you know, daily, daily, uh, you know, uh, like, mm -hmm. um, what did, what did they use? You know, what was, what was, what was being used up and they needed to replenish, you know, supplies mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. And I think, you know, I always, have, I, I always find the, the, um, uh, hmm. people in in britain and in the uk i always find them to be you know they're they're friendly they're they're polite they're funny mm -hmm. uh with a british sense mm -hmm. of humor and the farther yeah. you know up north up north when you're up there in that northumberland area you know you're really up there in this like i said remote countryside area and people i i just love the people i love the people <laughs> in the inns i love the people in the pubs i just i loved it you know i just mm -hmm. love that you're on you know on foot and then you go stay like an inn and a bed and breakfast and everything but yeah. i want to i want to go back to chester's roman fort that you went to yeah. You talked about in the article I thought was really cool is, and by the way, the photos, man, I'm just sitting there going, when you see everyone, when you see, you, you just, it's so cool. I'm really jealous. Again, like the last time we talked, um, you went, you know, kayaking, you know, the Lake District of Italy. Then you go walking in the, you know, Roman ruins in England. I mean, that's kind of interesting to go from Italy and England and connect the two together in a way, right? Um, yeah, when you think yeah, about this Roman Italy. history, yeah, 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 right. And so this fort, this Roman fort, so they had their baths and steam room is preserved. And you know, you yes. think about Rome and the Roman baths, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So here they yeah. are. I mean, you know, you see these ancient things from Italy with it, like they believed in bathing in hot water and steaming. <laughs> and I mean, and if you think about the Eastern, you know philosophy and and not just philosophy but way of life is that too there's something yeah. about going and steaming your body to death you know yeah. hey let's be raisins apparently but this but this is like so cool that these baths are there that's that's something yeah. i would say is really unique to but, see but you know i mean the the uh, the town of bath in england oh is, that's is right bath, i forgot you know? about and that it, yeah you know the same kind of things but it also tied in with when I went to Hot Springs, Arkansas, and saw right. the whole bathhouse, you know, row situation. Exactly. And, and, yeah. and everywhere around the world, you know, it seems that, you know, soaking in hot water, especially, you know, mineral springs or whatever. Well, it I mean, feels it's, good. it's therapeutic. Therapeutic. Yeah, it feels you know? good. There's those baboons that do it. 
you know, when it's yes. all snowy cold outside and they're out in the hot springs going, I'm all ha happy. Oh, Somebody give me a cocktail. You know, there's those little baboons. It's, it's, I think it's, it's somewhere in the East, in Asia, somewhere the baboons are in there going, you know, bring me a cocktail. And if you do, I'm going to bite your hand off. But bring me yeah, you know, there's, there, yeah, there's a place in, um, there's a place in Japan where the red, the monkeys that have the red. I think that's what I'm know, talking about. Yeah. That's, it's in Japan and they, um, uh, northern part of Japan, and you know, in the winter, you, you know, there's pictures of them sitting out there, and the you know, the ice is around them, and the steam of the bath is there, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, I just, I think it's like it's just older than time, you know. Mm. Well, but these yeah, parts I mean, are it's. It's, you know, it's, we spent so much time in Africa, and the constants were monkeys, different kinds of monkeys, depending on what country you were in, but baboons. And baboons are cheeky. They're um, yes. they, yes. they really they really are. They can be scary. They can be ferocious, and they yeah. show their teeth and their canine. Oh, yeah, teeth are as, they're as, they're as big as a lion's. Yeah, no, so I've seen them look, in Africa. I know they can be, yeah, be very yeah, yeah. nasty, and you have to be very careful of them. You know, well, I remember Cape Town? We've talked about that when you went to Cape yeah. Town. And with yeah. that yep. point, that area there, crazy. Yep. I, okay, so I'm going to go back to the sheep and calves and, and yeah. human calves. When you're talking about, okay, there you will get sore at the end of the day. You are walking and you're yes. going on inclines. So yes. with, so if someone going on this walking holiday, if mm. do we have to, like, be the athlete? I mean, if you say, like, get to some area and you're like, I don't want to do that. Like, you know what I mean? If it's too much <laughs> for someone. I mean, how, how? What, so this is this is how it works. First of all, I think you have to be in decent shape, but not you don't have to be some sort of uber hiker. Okay, I'm okay. I'm not an uber hiker. I'm not an I don't consider myself an athlete. I consider myself in decent shape. You know, mm -hmm. but um, I think you know you the, the the thing with this one is you just have to be willing to to walk. Uh, you know, sometimes a, a long long way you spread it out over the mm -hmm. day but it is a long sometimes it's a long way um and if you're not used to it if you haven't you know maybe prepared and and uh gotten yourself ready to do that by you know doing long walks uh, in your own neighborhood or wherever uh to to prep and they do tell you to do that you know to get yourself ready mm. for that but this is what can happen so say you know you just are you know really exhausted or um, you know, perhaps the, the next day you're just like, I can't, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do 12 miles or whatever it is. So yeah. what you can do is they do give you the numbers of the taxi companies that are responsible for, for example, uh, sometimes you don't walk directly out of your inn. Sometimes the taxi picks you up and takes you to where the starting point is uh, so that, you know, you don't have to walk through endless amounts of whatever to get to the starting place, you know. So, gotcha. so, so you can call uh, the taxi company and say, hey, you know, instead of um, taking me to X thing, could you take me a little further to this place? Or maybe they can pick you up at another little location that's a little bit closer and take you back to the inn, you know, that kind of thing. So you can try and work with them. Uh, you know, it is definitely possible. And, you know, they, they are definitely, they definitely know they've dealt with a lot of walkers. It's, it's walking country up there. Everybody goes there. It's there for the Hadrian's wall. And so they know. And so, you know, there's, there's, you know, it's not like there's tons of taxi companies up there, but, but they're very, very uh, amenable. And, you know, so I don't think that there's any problem with that whatsoever. You know, oh, that's awesome. Because I just kind of look that, at different, yeah, different age yeah. groups going and, you know, yes. it's like the walking the Camino, right? In, in Spain right. and everything. It's, it's, you've got sure. to beef up a little bit. Don't just go book a, a walking holiday and haven't gone walking for a little bit. No, yes. no. not a good more, idea. No. Yeah, yeah. Let's get, let's get physical. Um, but yes. Nancy, <laughs> Nancy and I were laughing because you had a photo in there about lollipops, uh, lolly, ice lollies, not lollipops, mm, yeah. ice lollies. And we haven't seen that, yes. but it was like a pound of lolly. And I'm like, yeah. dude, we haven't seen that since we were in England. And I don't think there were yeah. a pound. And it was like 20 cents or maybe five cents, <laughs> pence, pence, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, pence, but, five pence, but it, yes. <laughs> but it had a sign, you had a sticker on there saying walkers welcome. So they're, they're really yeah. geared up yeah. for people walking, but it's not like it's like, you know how like Yellowstone and stuff can get with yes. gazillions of yeah. people. It's not like that, yeah. though. Yes. It's a nice you just, balance. You know, 
And you have to be willing, you know, I mean, you know, you have to be able to be okay with using nature as your, your, your oh, toilet yeah. at times, you know, I mean, you, you know, you could be out there and, and I mean, you're out there somewhere in nowhere and sometimes there isn't anywhere, you know, you can't, you know, you, it's going to be miles before you get to. Oh, welcome to our love your parks tour. There's <laughs> seriously, I mean, truckers have seen me in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> they've like literally and then then the yeah. rest area was five but minutes least, down the road and then they see yeah. me and they wave and go i saw you now you don't no, at least they're, yeah. they're really polite because they are nice enough to honk and go i saw you i, I saw you. you i know what you did <laughs> <laughs> which i find really funny but I you mean, do you know i mean yeah. i i have found everywhere from you know trees and bushes to even small rocks that I can just sit behind. You know, I mean, it's like whatever you can find, you find, you know. And yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it those is. areas, those yes. little walls, those sheep herding walls, and, you know, yeah. those walls that I was talking about, those, those the, rock yeah, walls. Yep. You can They're lean perfect, on. Perfect, can, blo- perfect blocks for it. For, it's a for, perching for, spot. Yeah. Yeah, for, for, it, is, it is perfect. And what another thing what's really cool is once in a while, you come across like a, in – Maybe uh, like somebody's ho- outside somebody's home or right outside some village, they, somebody has put up a little like a little um, place for for walkers that you can you know it's on the honor system and they have like um, you know iced uh, iced lollies they have water they have you know and you put the money in that you know you put it in the box and they have you know like the little food stuff or st- anything. And one even had like T-shirts of the Hadrian walls at the, in this little you know place, and you you know it's so much fun that you came come across us that somebody would put this out there you know and, and trust it's all, yeah yeah and trust it's all in the honor system and really who else is going there it's mm. it's, it's all it's walkers walkers people who want to be there you know who who are very respectful of the environment you know I love yeah. that. I love that That's because cool. it's connecting you with the community too, you know, yes. and it's industrious, it's entrepreneurial. It's probably some kid doing it too, going, I need pocket money, you know, yes. or, or your family, yes. you know, but you know, farming, you know, you're in farming country yes. and farming yeah. as we're learning is just not that easy. <laughs> and no, there's no, a lot of hard not. work and, and you need to make money from every avenue you can. So whatever you can do to support, I think that's great. And it does have it that is. connection. And you know it's so I mean? much fun That's to come cool. across, just to come across it. You're kind of like, oh my God, yeah, it's it's really hot and I need a nice lolly. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's just, oh. it was such a, and then, you know, they have put like little chairs out and you can sit out, out you know, sit and enjoy oh, your sweet. snack or whatever. It was so, it was just, it was that's really, sweet. really welcoming. Charming. Yeah, yeah, very that's... welcoming, very but... hospitable. And you know that, you know, typically when you go into a pub, you know, uh, I spent a lot of time in Irish pubs in Ireland, but a lot of pubs, I mean, in the British Isles, it just, I just think that, you know, you walk in and I don't know, you, you, people are, people are friendly and they, you know, they, they'll start talking to you and you, you know, all of a sudden you're kind of like part of the fam there, you know, it's just, right. it's, a well, nice they feel, know. it's a nice feeling. Yeah. They want to know, yeah. like, it, it's yeah. different in this country because we are a bunch of immigrants all piled together. Right. But when you go to England or That's you go, just you saying. know, when you go to another country and it's not so many Im- immigrants piled in one place, and so you go right. into a, a British pub, they yeah. already know that you're not from there. Yeah, just by which is interesting. Way yeah, they know by body language, by how you dress and how you talk. They already know. Right. Mm-hmm. So, right. But, and they're always, you know, they're always curious. Everyone's always curious. They're curious. And it's just, you course. know, and as a traveler, it's so nice to kind of get that that feeling of being being welcomed. I, I mean, I, I yeah. love it. And I, I'll, I'll find any excuse to talk to anybody because I'm always curious about them as well. You know? Yeah, exactly. it's like, yeah. Well, my thing is, I love those little towns. And um, mm-hmm. Me too. when, yeah. you know, when we drive through them, you know, just like, it'll be like, yeah. the, that's my thing is when the morning comes that morning light, and you'd see lights yeah. on it, like four or five mm-hmm. in the morning, you're like, why are yes. they up early? Are they yeah. typing an article? Are they having coffee, getting their kids ready? Are they doing yeah. a second job? Yeah. Did they just come yeah. home? Like you want to yeah. know what's going on. Like what's what's yeah. the industry of the town? And you know, when when a community like you're talking about, Nancy and I've you know talked about this for years on the tourism side. Mm-hmm. If the community isn't connected to the tourism, you don't get that feeling and and that unwelcome feeling is not cool for the traveler, but 
it's got to be done right. And what you're talking about is what is done right. When everybody's like, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll welcome walkers coming through. Well, oh, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? It's not like it's Disneyland coming into our town and, you know, no, it's, and it's giving, also, they're it's, giving, it's, you know, it's, boosting, it's, it's part of the industry, money. you know what I mean? Yeah, it's it boosting is, industry. You know? This is the epitome of ecotourism in my my book. And you're, yeah. you know, it's not like you're driving from place to place. And, no. you know, you've got, you're going into inns. It's very yeah. local. I mean, that's an yes. authentic, authentic, real experience. Yeah. I think like what you did here and on the Wales coast a path, and then like what you did with the kayaking in Italy, these are things that are just so light footed and, yeah. where you're really immersed in true it's authentic and and I know we use that term authentic travel but um there's something where you is. are connecting and giving back in in some way you know it's of um, course you are you know you're staying in their inns you're eating the mm-hmm. food you're you know what i mean you're using their did you have taxi bangers services. and services did you uh, have bangers I, and mash? I'm not a fan of 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 that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're fish and chips, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I had a lot of fish and chips, but yeah, no. I and I also, you know, there's also those there's those pasties or pies or whatever mm. they have. You know, they Cornish have Cornish pasties. pasties. <gasps> yeah. Yes, yes, oh. yes, yes. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I haven't had one in years, but I do have <laughs> jars of two jars of Marmite, and I'm very Ooh, excited. Marmite. Now that's an acquired Marmite. taste. That is and Nancy and I had taste. crunchy. Oh no, Mar- I I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. I'll eat it. Like, yeah, but Lisa, oh you're, you're on, on your weird. own for that. I know, but <laughs> yeah, you're, you're definitely on your own for that. <laughs> no, they on the show, but I love it. <laughs> but, sorry, but, but <laughs> thanks to friends, good friends, yeah. we have crunchy bars too, and so Ooh. well, they're gone Ooh. now. Which oh, is sad, crunchy though. bars are wonderful. Do you have more stash, yeah. Nancy? Because like I could have another one. But if you know what, I'll this is never the thing tell. when you do this walking, See, you, can you can eat whatever you want when you get into that pub. Right. You can eat anything because you walked all day. You have yeah. this is the perfect oh. balance. I love this. Yeah. I want to go. Mm. I I'm jealous again because this is mm. totally my kind of thing where you can just walk and be and does your cell phone work while you're walking or do you just go like that's it it depends it depends it depends on where you are you know what oh, I mean? okay yeah, yeah. So, sometimes yes sometimes no you know i mean but it's, it's nice when it some, doesn't oh you <laughs> when, know it's it, it is what it is you know you just kind of yeah. say well you know i've got service now great if not i don't you know so yeah you know it's and, just yeah, yeah i mean it, barring they, a, you know, an emergency who cares well, you, you know, know, that's the thing, you know, it's, it's yeah. you know, I mean, you do have to think to yourself, okay, I am going to be out in places where, you know, there isn't mm-hmm. going to be an access to something, uh, you know, I can go down to the road, and if I needed to flag down somebody at the road, you know, and I mean, that yeah. kind of thing, you know, yeah. and that's, you know, that's what you have to, to think about, and probably you would be, you know, it, it, probably somebody would stop if you if you flagged yeah. them down. You know, so. But and, this is know, so different it. than being out in the middle of the desert, not knowing. You know what I yes. mean? When we do these big hikes, you know, yes. it, it. You know what I mean? Yes. This is yeah. different. I mean, your danger is not snakes and things no. like that, or no. flash floods no. or anything. No. Um, it's cow patties and sheep sheep poo. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so okay. And how are the cows? I mean, uh, your husband, I saw that one photo with your husband and the cows. I'm like, (laughs) he's walking right into the big land of moo. Yeah. Oh, my God. They were were hysterical. Sometimes we had to, like, you know, almost push them to the side because they were right in the middle of the trail. You know, it was like, they stay pretty funny. And they, you know, they don't, they're very, they're very, uh, you know, fairly passive animals, the cows, you know, bulls, no, but cows, yes. And so, and the the sheep are, and the sheep are basically scared of their own shadow so you don't have to yeah. worry about them usually if you start walking and they're in the the way they just start running away you know kind of thing but um you know it's just the cows are funny because they'll just be eating and they'll you know, just be walking around them and their tails are swishing and whatever you know it's just it is it is it is kind of humorous and you do have to understand that that you know you are in very rural country and that's what you're going to see you know mm-hmm. yeah this is this and is they do so kind cool. of look at you like, well, what are you doing, and how come you only got two legs? <laughs> yeah. Like, what's up with wow. you? You only got two legs. <laughs> hey, I love it. Everyone, Celtic Trails Walking Holidays. <laughs> co. uk. So Celtic 
trailswalkingholidays.co.uk is the website uh, to go to for this company that she you know booked this tra- trip with um which is great because i think it just gives you this way of you know i like customized kind of things and doing mm-hmm. doing yes. what you want to do um yes. so check it out but really uh go go see the article up on nationalparktraveling.com it will be in one of our park and travel magazines coming up soon we've got so much on europe and england it's like what just happened? Everybody went out and we're like, what? Yeah. what? It's like, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. So we're going to have some special editions coming out. Uh, Debbie's got articles and uh, all of the new magazines out. So um, check them out. If you go to blend radio and TV.com or national park traveling.com, sign up for our newsletter. We come out with a new magazine every week because we're so bored. Like as we travel the country, we have nothing to do. <laughs> <laughs> We're just so bored. No, but I mean, it's really, it's so exciting to see all these places, you know, and it's like, we really, you know, travel is back. We just be safe about it. And, um, you know, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just do it. Go have those amazing experiences because, you know, we don't know if we come back. And if we do come back, it's probably not going to, you know, it's not going to be the same. You know, because you're coming back for a reason then. Like, and maybe you have to, like, you know, do something you don't want to do. But while you're here, (laughs) I suggest that everybody does as much travel as they possibly can. Because it is just those days where you don't have a cell phone working. You're walking in a field and you see sheep. And you really, you just get to be. There's nothing like it. There isn't. There isn't anything like it where you can just be. And uh, travel allows you to do that and to stretch everything, uh, you know, stretch your mind, stretch your, there's no such thing as a comfort zone. Get over it. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> stretch your body. Do do, yes. do that thing and, you know, transport yourself. You know, like I just was a very, mm-hmm. I was a big fan of the Jane Eyre and the Wuthering Heights and all that. You know, those, I, you, yeah. know, you transport yourself out of the pages of a book. You tra- you're like, oh my gosh, pinch me, Heathcliff. pinch me, you know? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's, because but that's the thing. You get did you read it before you go? It, yeah, yeah. Like, did did you read the book or watch Weathering Heights and, and Jane Eyre before you went? I read. You, I, I reread. Actually, it was really interesting. On the plane, I reread um, parts of of both those uh, because I downloaded them. I, I read them years ago. You know, young yeah. year, years and years yeah, ago. Yeah. And and I read them again because I kind of wanted to get back into the the vibe the whole yeah. scene and the vibe of it you know and it really i mean i thought to myself does it i wonder if it really matches up to what i think this this landscape would look like you know mm, and did it sure enough it oh gosh yes even the the wind definitely <laughs> matched up to that <laughs> oh wow and the heather so it was oh, the cool. heather yes. the heather to me yes and and you talk about peat bogs i know we've got to go but the peat yeah. bogs i want to go back yeah. to that because it's something that I, we're not used to so much here in the states i mean we've seen some bogs like cranberry bogs in washington state would i oh yeah why no we were going to see that but we did and herons and cranes and storks like them yeah up in long beach area and i know mary farah a travel writer went and talked about that and we found them and we're like oh my god this is real and it's reddish and the birds love it but i think that's kind of like there's some some of the mound areas, Native yes. American mounds, there's yes. like there's a peat thing going there, and there's like something going on. But I don't think and there's this a lot of there's a lot of you'll see it. a lot of um like hay bales in up in the Northumberland area. You know, big bales of hay that they are you know wrapped up and all all dispersed all throughout the fields, and you know you just <laughs> you know it's just it's it's like I said extreme pastoral landscape mm. you know so mm. if, if that's not what you want i'm telling people you know if you don't want to be you know stomping through the countryside up in the north part of england you know then then you know there are plenty of other <laughs> walking types of holidays that are walking you know you can walk within cities you can walk you know you can walk anywhere you know so it doesn't you know you can pick the landscape that you want to do you know the wales coastal path was you know half of it was you're you're along the coast you're seeing the water and the beaches you know yeah, this was awesome. definitely a different this is a different landscape you know the camino is a totally different landscape you know now that this is i think what they're doing is like i i want to go work for them so i can go walk them on. <laughs> it's like you just <laughs> want to go i'm like i want to go <clears throat> because there really are so many different things and when you go on their website it's cool they say where do you want to go the season the right. difficulty so right. they do scotland wales ireland europe like that's cool yeah. and yep 
I'm just going to go easy. I want to go. Let's see. Seven nights. Easy. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is you pick can your holiday. Really... Pick your holiday. You know, and pick, exactly. your, pick your your pick your dates. Pick your time. You know, they set up all the accommodations for you. They set up all the transfers for you. That the the pickups of the luggage. They set up everything. They advise awesome. you. You know, with the, here's different restaurants and pubs you can eat at. Here's you know these are different things you can do in the area. You know, if you have time, blah blah blah. And so it's an extensive and very detailed itinerary. Does this help people that are busy? Like, like you say to them, I want to go, please you just yeah. deal with it because I don't want to yeah. have to, because I think we got into this thing where everybody was planning their own stuff. Like when, yeah. you know, it, it, the internet changed travel and right. now we're seeing travel agents and, and travel agencies come back a little bit yes. more online. And yes. we're seeing this, like where everybody's like, yeah, you know what? I kept trying to do everything myself and I didn't know a damn thing. I didn't know India was going to want me to do this. I didn't know all this. And maybe that's why you had a licensed travel agent help you. And these right. small, you know, companies that know their land, they know their exactly. area, they have all the, the connections. That yeah. to me is like, you know what, it, let them help you. And you go do what you do best. Go, go do your right. career and, and, you know, get those funds so that you can go do this and let them do the work, you know? Yeah. It's kind of a, I mean, really it's, a big business it's having, it's having an ex, it's basically having an expert, you know, somebody who is, is familiar with that landscape, has walked the area, knows the area, and somebody, you know, who has all that expertise in that particular niche. And, you know, you can, you can depend and trust on that expertise. And it's, it's kind of a really nice uh, uh, way for people not to have to spend if they don't want to spend their, their time trying to research and do that by themselves. Yeah. Well, and sometimes you really do need someone. Of mm -hmm. course. You it's, really. Yeah, I have no. I have no problem saying. You know, gee, I. I you know, I, I. I could use some help and expertise. It's really nice to be able to rely on somebody and mm -hmm. somebody who really knows that particular area. You yeah. know. Yep. So yeah, I love yeah, it. I love it. I love it. Well done, Fire Monkey. Everybody, FM. <laughs> now it's like, hey, well, she's on the radio, so you know we're on the FM <laughs> today. So everybody, again, uh, travel writer Debbie Stone. Uh, type her name in on both our sites, nationalparktraveling.com or blendradioandtv.com. You'll see her in our magazines, and of course, she's here every fourth Tuesday. Keep up with us at bigblendradio.com. Thank you so much. It's been. A pleasure as always. We can't wait for next month when we'll be talking about your adventures out in the Pacific Northwest. You're, yes. You keep bouncing back there. That's, But we're I'm, excited I'm, about know, that. We're it'll going be, back it'll again, be, too. Oh, we didn't plan awesome. on, yeah, we're going back. So <laughs> it's your fault. You started it. <laughs> 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 well stay stay safe ladies okay you, you too. too you take care thanks debbie <laughs> all right talk soon bye-bye bye-bye